Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, June 13th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And it is Microsoft's Patch Tuesday. Depending on how you count, we got fixes for 50 or 51 vulnerabilities today. Now, some of them are no surprise. We got a flash update. We also got the update for Spectre version 4, which of course still requires the microcode patch from AMD and Intel. But these are not the vulnerabilities that I'm most worried about. There are two vulnerabilities here that I think could become a big problem if an exploit for them should materialize. First of all, a vulnerability in Microsoft's DNS server. A malicious DNS response may execute arbitrary code. This, of course, could be done fairly easily, maybe even vulnerable, where you have a malicious DNS server that then responds using the exploit to arbitrary DNS requests. The second vulnerability is also a server vulnerability in HTTP.sys. This is essentially the core of IIS that responds to HTTP requests and apparently a malicious HTTP request may trigger arbitrary code. Microsoft labeled the second vulnerability as unlikely to result in exploitation, meaning that it won't be easy to come up with a reliably working exploit. In addition, of course, we got updates for Microsoft Edge and Internet Explorer, including the scripting engine to come with it. And that is again the bulk of the vulnerabilities. So as far as patch priorities go, definitely take a look at these DNS and HTTP.sys vulnerabilities. That's something you should address rather quickly if you are running affected servers. And that also may take a little bit more testing. So better to get started on this soon. The DNS vulnerability in particular can also be exploited against clients Windows 7 and Windows 10. Not really clear given that we don't really know exactly what these responses look like, whether or not they will be transported by recursive name servers. And then we also got some security news for software running on OS 10. Now this does not affect software written by Apple, but instead it affects other security software that does assign special privileges to software written by Apple. This particular vulnerability affects a large number of security products that run on OS 10, and essentially it allows an attacker to add malicious code to an otherwise benign binary that was signed by Apple. The root of the problem is that Apple supports something called universal binaries. These files can contain of multiple parts that are written for different processors. For example, an attacker will use a valid binary from Apple, then manipulate the FAT header to essentially mark the CPU time as invalid, and then add their own binary, which is marked for i386, and then compiled for x8664, which is the most common hardware platform used by OS X to date. The code will be loaded, the signature will be verified only for the Apple part of the binary, which of course now will not run because the CPU type is invalid and the malicious code will be executed instead. Part of the problem here is that the documentation for how this code signing works is a little bit lacking and that probably led to so many security tools misinterpreting how to actually verify these signatures. Vendors have been notified and earlier today I saw an update come through for a little snitch, which is one of the affected tools. 
And Google Chrome extensions have had a bad rep recently with a lot of sort of malicious Google Chrome extensions popping up and it looks like Google is trying to put a halt to that. Google announced that starting today, they'll make it more difficult to install extensions in line, which means that you can't necessarily go to any website, that website then offering you an extension for immediate install. Instead, you will be redirected to the Chrome Web Store, which of course does give Google more control over these extensions and would then make it possible for Google to actually block install of these extensions once they have been found out to be malicious. Currently, this will only be effective for newly created extensions, but starting September, inline installation will be disabled for existing extensions as well. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.